Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at getting started with RAD Bullet Graph, part of the data visualization package within the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and RAD controls for WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we're going to see what it takes to create a brand new RAD Bullet Graph in your project. After that, we'll check out some of the important properties that you'll need to know about for working with RAD Bullet Graph, and finally, we'll take a look at the multiple orientations that we offer with RAD Bullet Graph to better fit your projects and solutions. Stepping into Visual Studio 2010, we're going to use the Telerik Visual Studio Extensions menu to create a brand new Silverlight project. From the Install Templates, we'll make sure Telerik is selected, go into the Silverlight section. I'm going to be using a C-sharp RAD control Silverlight application, and I'll call this RAD Bullet Graph Getting Started. Click OK. Now we're working with a brand new Silverlight 5 project, so we don't have to change any of these settings. And now with the Project Configuration Wizard open, we know that RAD Bullet Graph lives within Data Visualization, so we'll select that and the configuration wizard will ensure that any other dependencies that we require like Telerik Windows controls are selected and finally we'll click finish. Now that our project is all loaded we can see within the references dialog that we have our Telerik Windows controls, controls data visualization, as well as Windows data so all the required assemblies for Bullet Graph are here in a project. So now we can minimize Solution Explorer to get a little bit more real estate back on the screen and now we want to go ahead and start adding Bullet Graphs to our user control. Move this up a little bit, get a little bit better view on this XAML. First thing I want to do is define some grid column definitions. This way I can just both the horizontal and vertical versions of the bullet graph. I'll make these equal. Now we have two columns and of course we want to start with the Telerik namespace and we'll say rad horizontal bullet graph. Now if I just define this we can look at our design surface. We'll actually shrink this down a tiny bit and you can see not much is showing up just quite yet. So I want to find a few things. First up we're going to say our height is going to be 50 so we'll kind of limit it the height. I want to give it a margin so it's not quite so tied to the different sides. 10 looks nice. And now we want to start throwing some values at it. So we can say our minimum will be 0. Our maximum will be 100. And now we're kind of set to start throwing some real values at this control. So for this, you have three real things that you're concerned with for the bullet graph. First up, we're going to have our featured measure. And this will say it's 40. Now you can see we have our scale, everything's starting to show up. Now, featured measure is going to be kind of, you know, a number that you're demonstrating. We also have comparative measure. This is, you know, something you're comparing against, maybe a goal you're shooting for. So for comparative measure, we'll go ahead and make this one 75. We can see our comparative measure line has shown up on our bullet graph. And last up, there's going to be projected value. Now, projected value isn't quite the same as two of the measures, this is really kind of a projection, a conjecture on your data for how you expect things to go. So in our case, we have our featured at 40, our comparative at 75, so if we projected, we'll be very optimistic and say 90. So you can see that right now we're at 40, we're looking to beat this number, and as far as all of are concerned, we're pretty sure we're going to hit this point. So that's a really good way to quickly demonstrate some values within a quick and easy to read data visualization. Now if I want to go one step further with this, we're going to go ahead and work with the RAD Horizontal Bullet Graph qualitative ranges. So we have Teller, RAD Horizontal Bullet Graph dot qualitative ranges. Here we're going to insert a Telerik qualitative range collection. And within that, you guessed it, Telerik qualitative range. For this, there's really two things you want to set, the brush and the value. The brush is going to be what's displayed, so we'll make this a dark gray for good display purposes. And then the value. And the value kind of goes against that scale that you already have going in the bullet graph and kind of gives you another view of your visualization. So for this case, we'll say value is 50. And you can see this is shown up. Now we can see that there is some other kind of measure we're working with. And it really helps if we add a few more of these. So Telerik, qualitative range. Brush is going to be light gray. Make the value here equals 75. So this is going to kind of line up with where we have our comparative measure. And finally, we'll add one more to our qualitative range. Brush will be something nice like light green, showing we have some good success here. And the value will be the top of our scale. So you can see this actually comes into play right here. And now we can go ahead and run our project and see this in action. And now that we have Internet Explorer all loaded up, you can see our bullet graph is displaying. We have our featured, projected, and comparative measure, as well as our qualitative ranges. And the axis range that you see is actually displaying numbers kind of based on the amount of room the bullet graph has. So if I go and stretch my window out, 
you can actually see more values pop in, or if I shrink it down, values will disappear. Making sure that the bull graph is always readable, regardless of how your user changes the window size, which is a very cool feature that you get built in for free. Now if we close this up, we can go ahead and look at the vertical orientation for Red Bull Graph. And this is actually going to be pretty simple to set up. So simple, in fact, that I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste our horizontal bullet graph. Except this time, I'm going to say grid.column equals 1. And instead of red horizontal bullet graph, we'll say red vertical bullet graph. Now, of course, I'm going to need to change a few places here. Scroll down. And we can see it's looking pretty awesome because I have those height and margin set. So now, rather than having my height and margin, we're going to say our width equals 50. We'll actually make this a little bit wider, give ourselves a little bit more to look at. And we can keep our margin the same. But we get the same end result. Go ahead and run this. View it in our Explorer one more time. And now you can see we have both our horizontal and our vertical bullet graph showcasing both the featured, projected, and comparative measure. You can see here as well as well as our three qualitative ranges. And the vertical bullet graph has that, has that same fantastic axis display, so as I go and shrink things, it still remains readable. You still get the values and the idea of where numbers are, but we make sure it stays readable regardless of what your user is doing with your project and the resolution. So I hope you've seen how easy it is to get started with Red Bullet Graph. Stay tuned for more videos in this series to see what you can do with this easy to use data visualization control.